Hey everyone, welcome to Waxing Pixels, the podcast by Battle Geek Plus. On Battle Geek Plus. Because it's Battle Geek Plus's podcast. My name is Josh, and I'm the person who talks first. And with me, as most of the time, not always, I have Heather. Hi. Ryan. Hey. And Frank. I'm the guy that introduces himself last. Yes. <laughs> Very yes. And we're back. We are back after some technical issues that we're actually still kind of having. We're just kind of winging it. Like right now, we're in an underground bunker with like a computer that barely works and like it fritzes out all the time. And we're hoping this message gets to you before the enemies storm in and kill us all. You know, we have to pass on the information to save humanity and stuff, right? Yes, we have to pass on lots of cool gaming information to save humanity from boredom. No. We will die to keep you entertained. I didn't sign up for this. Well, now you're a part of it. Oh, fuck. You've been swept up into an adventure unwillingly, and now you're going to go through some character growth, and you're going to get EXP that you can use on a skill tree. Welcome to the front line, Heather. hoo Hey, at least you're customizable. (laughs) (laughs) I want bigger tits. Well, that's unlockable. Ooh. <laughs> or it's DLC. Damn. Well, you know, we live in Orange County. We, we can pretty much just go down the street to find cosmetic surgeries, so. That is true. Anyway, how's everybody doing? Fine. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you too, Josh. How you doing? I'm good. I was enjoying my day doing jack shit. Awesome. Me too. You slept Actually, after you got home from work. You were playing Zelda. That's not yeah, doing I, jack well, shit. okay, fine. So I was I was playing Zelda, but I wasn't doing like adult things. Well, I didn't sleep last that night. That should be a name of a game. Jack shit. Jack shit. I've been playing jack shit. Sounds like oh, a... that's wait the game jack shit. You actually doing jack shit? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a like a party game or something like that. Mm. Ryan, how you doing? I've been pretty busy today at work because apparently since we're going to E3 next week, you know, work just wants to keep me as busy as possible. Well, but... you're going to be gone three days. You you need to work harder, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to be gone the whole week since I'm taking like the Monday and also the Friday off. So How dare you? I got the whole week off and so... The audacity of you, <laughs> you cog. <laughs> so yeah, I've been pretty well productive at work and also productive on the videos too. Hot dog. Awesome. Frank, how you doing? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Played uh, Evolve Stage 2. Nice. Which brings us into what you playing. Frank, what you playing? <laughs> Been playing Evolve Age 2 for about mm, 16 hours. Like just straight, just like you no, not, stick, not, not, <laughs> not in a row. I have a life. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you you're don't. You're just not a huge part... You're just not in a huge. You part get of it. up, you go to work, you come home, you work out, you go to the pool, you take a nap, then you screw around online, and then you go to bed. He Sometimes goes, you go to the movies. I was say he goes to the movies. That that's it. And and he goes to he goes to that class too. Oh yeah, I forgot about that class. Oh yeah, the acting class. Mm hmm. Which is something I I'd love to sign up for. Well, tell me when you want to go. And I'll okay. tell you the details. Okay. And what you need good. to bring. Alrighty. Well, uh, Ryan, what are you playing? Uh, let's see. I actually have not been playing any new games aside from Ultra Street Fighter 4 and the Switch. I did play it against our buddy Joe online and I streamed it, which was pretty fun. I actually beat... Did you demolish Joe? Uh, it, it depends on who, who I selected because, you know, I just like to select, you know, like whatever character. So I was mostly playing random and... Oh, so you're like Frank. Um, yeah, I say it was pretty even. Yeah, okay. It's pretty even. Yeah, he's actually pretty good. And also, um, I actually beat Hotel Mario on the Philips CDI that Joe lent me. Why? And it I just, was I don't... One of Why? the most painful experiences I've ever been through. I think I deserve a medal for beating the. No, you don't. Game. Because you did it to yourself, Ryan. Yes, I know. We do not award people for harming themselves. <laughs> oh, well, we and... coddle them. But and tell them that it'll be okay and to never do it again. <laughs> but regardless, it will make a very funny review and hopefully Joe will change his mind and make a cameo since I think he at least should do that. Uh, we'll see, I guess. You know, you know, uh, there are other ways of hurting yourself 
that might be more pleasurable. Like heroin, for example. Heroin's yes. better than Hotel Mario. Wow. <laughs> well, I assume the people who made Hotel Mario were on heroin. Um, or they're, something worse. They, they were probably quitting heroin, and that's why. <laughs> oh, God, the withdrawals. Heather, what you playing? Uh, as Frank said, I'm still playing Zelda. I uh, wrote down a list of all the items I needed to upgrade my armor. There are only eight pieces left for me to upgrade completely. Everything else is completely upgraded. After that, well, I don't know. I'll either storm the castle and kill Ganon, or I'll find some other mundane tax for me to complete before I do that, like finish out the, what is it called? The Contindum or something like that on the map where you take the pictures. Oh, uh, the Compendium? Oh yeah, the Compendium, that's what it is. Uh, there's several slots or in that that are... Compendium? I'm compendium. not sure. Compendium, I don't know. It's sort of the C, and you take pictures of shit. Encyclopedia you... of pictures. There you go. And um, so there are... There's quite a few things that I'm still missing, and because I just forget about the camera thing. So, like, there were three things that I took pictures of today, and I was like, hey, I didn't have pictures of those things. Awesome. Hmm. So I might uh, set myself the task of completing that before I go and fight Ganon. Oh, rad. Well, um, as for me, I'm playing something that we got a while back that we never really finished. Horizon Zero Dawn. Holy shit! Yep, Robot Dinosaur Zelda. Oh my god, you're the one playing it now. Josh, you don't have to lie to us. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's true. I'm playing Robot Dinosaur Zelda. I've even watched. it. It's it's actually a thing. See, now you got her in on it? (laughs) Well, I am his wife. I mean... So, it, he could kill someone and I'd be in on it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, now you know you got two people who help you dispose of a body. That's true. I don't know anybody I want to kill, though. <laughs> I'm sure we could find someone. But, <laughs> I mean, Hitler's already dead. So. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm playing uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I finally picked that back up. Uh, it didn't really take nearly as much... To get back into like the controls and stuff. But there's still like modifiers and like other weapons that I forget that I have and things like that. Mm -hmm. That I'm starting to rediscover again. Mainly by going to like merchants and stuff and being like, oh yeah, these are things. Um, But I ended up finding a, I don't know what they called it. But it was pretty much like some sort of like techno dungeon. Techno dungeon. Techno dun- so you're in Germany? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, there was like a techno dungeon, basically. Went through there, and it was like a, a factory where like some, some of the robots in the particular area. Oh, wait. I think I was in the room while you were yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, you're somewhere interesting. Yeah, yeah. And because, well, what happened was I kept uh, going and like killing stuff to kind of get my killing legs back. And... She kept saying, like, in her little voiceover stuff, she's all like, there's got to be a way to override more of these, and da 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 So before I really moved on with the story and got out of the area I was in, I started looking around on the map, I'm like, oh, hey, I don't know what this icon means. I'm going to go over here. And I went to Random Techno Dungeon, and I beat it. And it's not really, like, super hard. It's not, like, crazy puzzles and stuff like that. It's kind of just some platforming and some sneaking around and, uh, and a fight. And now I was now I have access to overriding more robots, like including some of the ones that were like pretty tough at the beginning of the game. Oh, nice! <laughs> so like there's like um, the big uh, I think it's called a sawtooth. Oh, that, oh, crap. That, that really big that first big yeah. boss, I, I like, remember that, 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 that you know that your, your dad takes you to. It's basically just like robot saber tooth tiger. Yeah, so yeah. like I can override one of those, and like there's an area Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> not too far away <laughs> where there's where there's the save me tiger and <laughs> I'll override it and then it goes after all the so other stuff gonna, that it's protecting when, when do you think you'll run into the Tyrannosaurus I don't know or the Mastodon mm, I don't know Is I know I've seen pictures of, of basically like a T-Rex but I don't know but there's probably a Mastodon I've, I've ran there into some be. I've ran into some new stuff because i went into the new area uh the first city that you're supposed to go to after you do the stuff in the city you were trying to get back into in the first place in the city 
And, uh, <laughs> and like the, the area kind of becomes more desert like and whatnot. So mm-hmm. there's different robots there. Right. And well, stuff. I think that would make sense. I haven't really explored much of that area. I've just been, I just went directly to what I was supposed to do to advance the story a little bit. I'm not like 25% complete now. Um, I'm just kind of all like, really, my big problem coming from Zelda to Horizon Zero Dawn is that Horizon Zero Dawn. You can't climb on everything. Oh, that's <laughs> oh. going to be something I'm going to miss so oh, much yeah, when I stop playing Zelda. Crazy. Like that's like like one thing that was really nice. Like Zelda's basically just like Spider-Man but in a blue tunic. Right? <laughs> well, and he doesn't have uh, stamina. Spider-Link yeah. does whatever a Spider-Link does. Does he swing the master sword? Of course he does. He's not bored. Look out. <laughs> Better move your shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> That was amazing how you made that all up on the spot. Thank that's, you. He, that, that was amazing. That's, that's, one of, that's like his, one of his talents. Like one of Frank's superpowers is just to make up new versions of the Spider-Man theme. Yeah. <laughs> so, But it sounds like he's practiced it for like years. I know. Well, I mean like the X-Men practice their superpowers, you know, so. Uh, yeah, but you can't climb all over everything and that sucks. Like, so I'll be like running up to like get away from something and like I come across like a rock wall and I just start trying to jump around (laughs) like just trying to like kind of glitch my way up the wall or something I don't know I'm I'm just kind of like no let me climb let me climb and like I can't I'm I'm, I'm gonna clip my way through this wall right also you know it'd be kind of nice if I had like masks like in Zelda so I could just put on like just like robot masks like a robot mask yeah don't mind me, watcher. Yeah, oh, just well, walk around doing the oh, But I think also yeah. one advantage is also your weapons won't break as easily, right? No, they or, don't break at all. all. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be nice. Durability, it's not an issue. Whoa. But, you know, you, you do have, like, every fight is still, like, kind of a big deal. So, you know, kind of like in Zelda. So I can't just, like, take my spear, which is the only thing that doesn't have ammo, and just, like, run out in the middle of the things and just be all, like... Hey, what's going on, robots? And just charge in balls first or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Robert, Robert. <laughs> so yeah, robot dinosaur Zelda is a thing, and I'm playing it. Yay! Yay! All right. So now that we're through what we're playing, let's move into topics. What's on the board, Josh? I don't know, but I felt like music was supposed to go there. Um, <laughs> been listening to Konzenshu. Well, here's what's on the board. Shaq Fu, Legend Reborn, out this fall. And if you have NBA Playgrounds before the DLC drops or whatever, before the patch drops, then you can get Shaq Fu for free. Woo! I actually heard the patch might have dropped around May, though. Which is funny, because this story, which is on NintendoEverything.com, was published on June 1st. Okay. Yeah, because then I was doing some research about it. And like, I heard there was some patch that happened in May, but I don't know what the details was about it. But yeah, um, this might give me an excuse to buy NBA Playgrounds. <laughs> Have you looked into NBA Playgrounds at all? No. Like, no? You just, you're just going to buy you're, it? You're just, just going to so you... go for it just to be able to get this game? Yeah. Oh, I think, Ryan. I think I might just like skip that and just go directly to Shaq Fu. Well, it depends if this game is like cheaper than Shaq Fu or if Shaq Fu is going to be cheaper. I don't really know, but still, who knows? Since, well, since, since when do you worry about what's cheaper? Hey, I might be able yeah, to get two games. Yeah, what? I might be able to get two games. This is an imposter. This is not Ryan. He's been replaced with a better of version house. of Ryan. A better version of Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> a more fiscally responsible version of Ryan. <laughs> Oh, well, guys, you finally found out my secret identity, so... <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> sir. Good, Good day. day. Good day. Um, I know that we talked about Shaq Fu just recently. Yeah. And at the time, there had there wasn't a release date for it yet, or a release, release time period quite yet. We well, yeah, I remember it, it was announced, like, in 2014 when that they were going to make this game because right, it was going to be yeah. for the wii u and yeah yeah, yeah. You know, the wii u didn't happen but hey now it's gonna oh, be I mean, like a thing or whatever it did i mean it's not like quite like the 64 dd or something but uh yeah but if any of you are interested in playing nba playgrounds get that soon that way you can get shaq fu a legend reborn for free for the rest of you who just want to nostalgia it up shaq fu a legend reborn 
drops this fall on the Switch. And this time they won't fool it up. Nice. I think we're just going to leave it right there and just move on to the next topic. Alrighty, so moving on into more Switch news. This is our only other Switch topic for today. I found it, you know, relevant to just kind of keep these all clumped together. Uh, Nintendo Switch paid online service is delayed till 2018, but there is good news about the service in general. Uh, You remember how uh, when it was first announced, it was all like, oh, you'll get a free game every month. And you'll be able to play that free classic game every month, and you'll be able to play that classic game multiplayer online. Oh, yeah, and then everyone was all like, oh, what about when the month is up and a new game comes out? Do we lose the previous game? And Nintendo was like, yes, you do lose the previous (laughs) game. And everyone was all like, fuck you. I was this close to beating Super Mario Bros. 3. (laughs) Well, now, for those of you who uh, take more than, like, eight minutes to beat Super Mario Bros. 3... Uh, I'd be one of those people. Yeah, me too. I mean, <laughs> I like watching the speed runs, but I'm no good at them. Nintendo changed their stance on that, and for their $20 per year online service, the new game that drops every month, the new classic game that drops every month, will continue to be playable as long as you still pay for the service. Pretty much making it exactly like the free games that drop on all the other online services for PlayStation and Xbox. So good job, Nintendo. Good you made job. a smart decision. And 20 bucks a year? Fuck, I'd pay for that. Yep, I'd pay for it. And yeah. In fact, I'm paying for it right now. Frank, would uh, you pay for it? I can't. Well, if you could, would you? Probably. Wow. Yeah, I would. Now, I would. Okay, so we have the guy over here who will buy anything for whatever reason, and then he's talking about how, like, I don't know, I want to get over whatever's cheapest, and we're all like, what? And now we got the guy over here who won't spend money to have air to breathe, and he's all like, yeah, I'd spend that money. What's happening? Are we in the, an alternate dimension? You know, I, I, it's I, the I, fucking Twilight Zone, y'all. Yeah, I think you know, one week of missing the podcast, you know, messed up our brains. <laughs> I, I think, <laughs> I think we just have pre E three jitters. It messed up the rhythm. Jitters? I don't know about jitters. Well, excitement. Um, the E three is coming up next week, yeah, and we're co- going. It causes an excitement of of in, of chemical imbalances in our brains. Okay, sure. Why not? I'm so gonna, Ryan I'm, is high and he's making an excuse for himself. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I figure after, you know, long days on a crowded floor of, you know, going and interviewing developers and trying out games and stuff like that. And then getting hammered! Like I was saying, we're probably going to get a little chemically imbalanced ourselves. A smidge. So, yeah. Nintendo online service, 20 bucks a month. It does not start, though, until next year... In the meantime, if you want to play any Switch games with online multiplayer, that service will continue to be free. For anybody waiting for a virtual console kind of service, Nintendo really has nothing to say about that right now. And I'm thinking maybe they're dropping the virtual console sort of name. Like, I I feel like they're just kind of integrating their classic games into their new online service. Mm. And they're probably just going to discontinue the virtual console brand name. You know what? That wouldn't be a bad idea. Probably. Just to merge the two and just, you know. I mean, people have been pretty harsh on the virtual console for like almost 10 years now because, you know, Nintendo, they start, uh, they kind of start, I don't know, releasing games much less frequently and with much lower quantity and stuff like that and people are all like why there's like you know a gajillion games and we're only getting like 12 yeah (laughs) so like what's going on and a lot of them have input lag yes 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 you play on a crt that's sitting between like your four led monitors (laughs) in your living room yes yes we know (laughs) i want my accurate punch out damn it I refuse to play Punch Out on anything else. What, what about what about uh, accurate, sexy derby? That I have to play on the CRT. <laughs> you can't mash the A button. Nope. With input lag. No. I'm pretty sure that that that, that game would also be another game that would uh, uh, be negatively impacted by lag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, what I'm referring to is Ryan has, in his living room, he has set up uh, a PC with two monitors 
and that's still hooked up to his TV somehow. And then between the TV and the two monitors, he also has a CRT with classic consoles hooked up. And so I can play light gun games, like right. Duck Hunt and Virtua Cop, which is very important in my life. <laughs> you know, we were going through uh, some old games and stuff like that the other day. And one of the things I decided to keep around was there was a Sega like two game collection for the Wii. Yeah, there were arcade light gun games that you play that you can play on the Wii with a Wii remote right. instead of a light gun. And I haven't plugged my Wii in for over a year now. It's still like ever since we no, moved. No, 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 it's not but we've only we haven't been here a year yet. Yeah, but we packed it up and then moved. Yeah. And we unplugged it when we moved. Okay, so a little under a year. <laughs> uh Give or take a couple of months, the Wii has not been touched for a very long time. Since September. So, and when it was still plugged in, I don't know if it was being used. Uh, I was using it. For what? I played, I finally, I started a new file of Harvest Moon and I beat that damn thing. I beat it. I finally oh, fucking right. beat it. right. Because you usually, you start it and you play it and you grind 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 and then like you just get tired of it. And yeah, yeah. this time you decided to be all like, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to get married and do the other stuff. Yeah. Like I went, I went balls to the wall. Like I had a notepad and I had like plans written down and shit so that I wouldn't get sidetracked. And I'm just glad yeah, that you finally that. were like playing it in a different room from me because guess the music, the music just like gets stuck in my head. Yeah. And yeah. it's not bad music by any means, but it's just kind of all like, wow, I've heard nothing but that song for days now. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so, okay. So before we moved, you were playing Harvest Moon on there. Uh, but yeah, we haven't touched it in quite a while, but for some reason I kept that around anyway. But yes, the classic games, according to IGN.com and their report on it, at launch, will only include NES games, but Super NES games uh, have not been announced yet, 64, things like that. So we'll see how that goes. They're probably trying to figure out how to do online multiplayer stuff for it. And eventually we'll probably get those things. So I would be surprised if we didn't, especially considering that like N64 is like the new retro now. I'm okay with that. So N64 is great. It is. Yeah, it's awesome. I had one. It was fun. I almost had one. Oh, right, because your I had cousin one, had one. I had one part-time, sort of. Yeah, your cousin had one, yeah. so, yeah. Um, and you were over at his place a lot. Yeah. So, alrighty. Uh, so, all of you who have a Switch, and you've been waiting on a virtual console, you've been waiting on online service and all that stuff, that's what's going on. So, we're going to move out of Nintendo Town, and we're going to talk some Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 now, Ryan, you and Frank are pretty much the Mega Man fans here. You even more so at this point. Mega Man Legacy Collection. You got the first one, right? Yeah, I got the first one. So tell me about the second one. So the second one is going to include Mega Man 7, 8, 9, and 10. It's also going to have extra armor, half damage settings. It's going to have checkpoint saves and hardcore options. Hardcore. Whoa. Hardcore. That sounds like something up your alley, Frank. Hardcore parkour. So I'm really excited for this, but I'm surprised they only put so little games. They could have added Neo Mega Man and Bass, which you know most people know as Rockman and Forte. And also, although you know Mega Man and Bass did come out on the Game Boy Advance, so they could have ported that over. You know, they could have also put Mega Man Soccer or Mega Man Battle and Chase, but uh, they just decided on four games. So it's funny that you say that because I was all like, "Oh, four games. That's a lot of games. That's awesome." And you're all like. Uh, it's not, they could have put more, and I'm all like, oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, and also Mega Man Soccer would have been great to add there, too. Mega Man Soccer? Yep, there's a Mega That's Man a thing? Soccer. That's a thing? I didn't know that. Maybe they're looking to make a trilogy out of it or something. Those games that not aren't being included on this one. Mike Man Forte, out on... Mega Man Soccer. Yeah. That one arcade game. Oh, and, yeah, uh, the Power Fighters. Yeah, uh, stuff like that. Maybe they'll include yeah, that, that on the Legacy. Megacy? Megacy. Megacy Collection. Megacy. Uh, That's actually a cool name for that. Megacy Collection. Megacy Collection. So, uh, well, but, there was a missed opportunity there, obviously. All right, so you got... The first one. Yeah, which had one through six. 
And did you buy that on like multiple platforms or just one? Uh, just on the PS4. Just on the PS4. Yeah. And how did how did that treat you? Yeah, it was pretty awesome actually. And actually, it had no input lag because you know they redid the code from the ground up, so it actually plays you know according to you know like modern television screens these days. Our monitors. Oh, good, good, yeah. good. And were there any? extra features like what they're talking about oh yeah and, there was you know extra features like a, a music player and there was also like an art gallery which is really awesome and they're definitely going to include those in this one too but anything like extra armor checkpoint saves, oh, yeah. uh, hardcore mode anything uh, like that? uh let's see i know there were save states which is really great and there was also uh yeah there was also like challenge yeah challenge mode where you have to do like these challenges like you have to get to this level within um, a couple of seconds, you have to beat this one boss as fast as you can, and you know you can be ranked in the leaderboards, which is really fun. Awesome. So, Frank, I know you didn't uh, get Mega Man Legacy Collection, but the second one, like, does that pique your interest at all? Actually, yes, it does. Why is that? Because the um, extra bonus stuff that you can get with the game, like the hardcore mode mm-hmm. and whatnot, and the save state thing. Mega Man just isn't hard enough for you anymore? Well, Mega... Well, I mean, you know how he was. Like, whenever God of War came out, like, he put that shit on hard mode and went to town on it. To be fair, I started from easy, normal, hard, and very hard. And let me tell you, between super-ass hard mode and hard mode are, like, two different leagues. Yeah? (laughs) Yes. Well, I got murdered ten times. Just on the first group of enemies. Wow. I, uh, Just the first group of enemies fun. within 10 seconds. Wow. You have to be perfect. Now, now I sort of exaggerated your skill at God of War uh, back in the day, but I legitimately believed what I was saying in that I told people that you were, they was like, oh yeah, Frank, Frank is so good at God of War. Like the first one, he beat that on God mode using the cow suit. <laughs> <laughs> And, which, by the way, God Mode, that completely pissed me off when I got that. It was like, God Mode. And I'm all like, God Mode. I'm thinking Doom. And, you know, where you're just pretty much, like, invincible and can do whatever you want. What? <laughs> yeah, that's what God yeah. Mode is. Like, yeah, okay. You're, you're pretty much... You, yeah, you're but... Giving I, okay, God all right, power, all right. You know, yeah. so then I, I start on God Mode. It's all, like... Murdered. Yeah, it's just, like, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of, like, I'm in the first cutscene still. And not, like, a quick time event. And he's just kind of, like... I'm Kratos and I'm gray and stuff and I have cool and then he just dies. Like, <laughs> he just dies of natural causes or some shit like that, like right on the first screen. And I'm just like, oh, this is gonna be really hard. So yeah, that, that kind of pissed me off. But I don't know. I was it was more like a well played sort of thing because yeah. totally changed the meaning of God mode. Oh yeah, because I do consider like um, Mega Man seven through ten, you know, the, like the harder games in the series, and I want to see how hardcore, you know, you know, the hardcore mode makes these already more difficult Mega Man games. Quadruple damage, <laughs> uh, spikes rest- everywhere. Restoration of la- uh, of input lag. My uh, my measurements with how much more difficult these games will be with hard mode will be how often and how loud Frank screams at his screen. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Son of a bitch! God damn it! Well, actually, like, yeah. there was, like... <laughs> yeah, there are achievements in Mega Man 9 and 10 where it, you can tr- if you beat the game without getting hit once, you know, those are achievements. What? But, but I think, yeah, but it's, it's uh, tough. If, it's if someone's able to pull that off on hard mode, like... Yeah, I have seen people on the leaderboards that have. Jesus Christ. It's, it's nuts. Now, have you seen what all of this will be available for, Mega Man Legacy Collection 2? It's only going to be available on the PC, the PS4, and the Xbox One, and sadly, not the Switch. Oh, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. It's right a very there. missed opportunity. But like, a lot of people are complaining about that. It's skipping the 3DS also. Yeah, which Ooh, is weird. Oh, yeah. Which, didn't the first one come out for the 3DS? Yeah. It could, yeah. And it also had a custom gold Mega Man Amiibo. Oh. So they're just, they're just like, fuck fucking Nintendo. everybody. <laughs> so, but uh, that's why I was asking, because I didn't know if it was coming to PC or not. Because, you know, Frank, he's got PC and he's got a 3DS. Yep. So if you're actually interested in it, it doesn't come to the 3DS. <laughs> so, but there's a PC mode. The PC mode. There's yeah. a PC version, so that is cool. Uh, anything else we need to know about Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 before we move on? It comes out August 2nd. Fantastic. Oh, hey. uh, hopefully it'll be playable at E3 next week. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. 
So. Yeah, because the first one was playable at E3. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I played it there. <laughs> cool, cool. Alrighty. So moving on to our last topic for this week. Sony Interactive Entertainment America President and CEO Sean Layden says that the PlayStation Vita is, quote, still viable. Whoa. Right? Weren't we going to, like, sell ours? No, I decided that, like, we were, th- we were thinking about it when we were going through stuff the other day uh, to take the book off, but I was like, no, I want to keep my handhelds. So oh, okay. I still... I At still least we found it. the charger for it. Yeah. <laughs> so we found the charger for it because it was the PSP that I had sold. Because oh, the PSP right. that was that I had sold... The PSP that I had sold, like, the network features, had, like, like the Wi-Fi had stopped working. Oh, right. right. So I was just like, eh, I'm going to get rid of it. But, no, I still have uh, the Game Boy Advance SP, the DS Lite, uh, the 3DS, and the Vita. Ew. So He fucking drooled all over me. That's what he does. Oh, Jesus Christ. Everybody Come. wants to be a cat. <sighs> Because the cat's the only cat that doesn't give a fuck where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I still have the Game Boy Advance SP, the DS Lite, the 3DS, and the PS Vita. And, well, they don't really take up a whole lot of space, so oh, I don't think true. I'm going to get rid of those anytime soon. Yeah, actually, I did play my Vita pretty recently because I think PlayStation did another flash sale, and I bought the original Resident Evil on the PlayStation for the you know from PSN, so I get to play that on the go on the Vita. Oh, rad. Now, I haven't really touched mine in a while, but, you know, it's good to have, like, on trips and stuff. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I, I might bring it to E3, so... Right. So, but anyway, uh, now, to clarify... The Vita is still a viable platform in Asian markets. Uh, Quote, chiefly in Japan and Asian markets. We still have developers in Japan who are building for that platform, but it just didn't get over the hump in Europe and America. It's hard to know exactly why, but it didn't garner a large enough audience here for us to continue to build for it. Now, maybe the fact that decent memory for the Vita cost about half the price yes, of a Vita. it does. You know, might have had something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, because bef- before I bought mine, I was like, hey, Vitas are pretty cheap. And then I see the 64 gig memory card. Oh my God. That, you know, was proprietary. And Which I bought too. <laughs> was a different memory card oh than the one. Oh my God, it's everywhere. It keeps drooling on me. And was a different memory card than the PSP. Like, I was hoping to at least just be able to change it over or something like that. But no... Like, they pretty much tried to break this thing down into as many little parts, proprietary parts, as possible, and so it didn't really pick up. Now, the fact that it is still viable in Japan and and Asian markets, that's pretty cool because most of what I was playing on the Vita that wasn't, like, free stuff on, like, Plus was stuff that was developed for Japan and Asian markets, uh, back when I got the Vita, you know, Senran Kagura was just a handheld franchise. It hadn't had PC ports. It hadn't had PS4 games or anything like that yet. So it's really nice because I'm imagining that developing for the Vita is just not nearly as expensive as developing for, you know, like a full-blown, you know, PS4 or something like that. Well, I haven't seen the Vita at E3 for a long time. I think the last thing I saw it, uh, the Vita at E3 for was Hotline Miami 2. Well, two years ago at E3, they had a lot of stuff going on with the Vita. They had like a Vita area and they were really pushing indie games. Oh yeah, that's what I heard too. Uh, that's what, well, I mean, I was there, I was playing it. Okay. I was like, yeah, the Vita is still a thing. And then like, it just kind of, that push didn't really do anything. And so... I'm pretty sure the, um, uh, I think it was... Damn it, now I remember what the game was called. Son of a bitch. That's not the game. I know, I know. But the subtitle the subtitle for it was Blood Drive. Corpse Party. That's what it was. Corpse Party. Uh, the first time I had never heard of Corpse Party before, and um, I ended up running across it a couple years ago, and it was being it was for the Vita that year. And then last year it was for a three DS. They were doing a copy for three DS. Oh. Well, between two years ago and last year, that's when the PlayStation Vita was announced to like shareholders and stuff like that as now being a 
legacy console. And last year, there was just absolutely no Vita presence at all. So Yeah, like, I don't see the Vita at, like, normal brick-and-mortar stores anymore. No, and I really, I don't know. Gameindustry.biz was where we got this information from on the Vita still being a viable handheld. And I don't know. I, I really feel like PlayStation Vita... PlayStation Vita, still viable. Sony. Like, I feel like that was kind of clickbaity, you know? Like, still viable in Japan, you know, would have been a better headline. Still viable in Asia would have been a better headline. But they ended up in the article uh, comparing it to the more recently released PlayStation VR and whether or not that'll actually continue to have any growth or not. They've already It already has, like, a million units sold, but... That's not really a lot in the grand scheme of gaming and everything. And hopefully when more software comes out, it will push more people to buy it. But if anybody is still trying to get a hold of their favorite Asian titles to play on the go, well, you might want to get your Vita out and start importing some games because that thing's region free. Woo! That's mm. That was like... A big draw for it too. Yeah, that's and which is a big draw also for the Nintendo Switch. I mean, the Switch its portability was also aimed like at the Japanese market because yeah. apparently they like portables more than handheld. Uh, portables more than handhelds. <laughs> portables Whoa. more than consoles. I was looking at it and it's both. Yeah, becomes portable when carried. Becomes portable when carried. <laughs> uh, so that was part of the portability of the Switch right there. Was thinking about the Japanese market and I mean, sure, it's about as portable as an iPad. You know, it's not a pocket device, but, you know, still portable when carried. That's pretty much it in terms of topics today for this week, for this podcast. I hope you all enjoyed listening to us today talk about what we're playing and what's coming up. We are going to E3 next week. That's June, what, 13th through the 15th? Yes. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We've got a lot of stuff that we have listed for ourselves to go check out. We've also got some appointments set up already to go talk with developers and try out their games and everything. We'll have some cool videos for you after we come back from E3, but until then, I doubt we're going to be doing a podcast next week since we're going to be up in LA. So until then, Ryan, we've got other things that we're going to be going up on Battle Geek Plus. What are they? So we got other shows like Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about our memories about video games, and we do reviews on them. And also, we shot some new episodes of Battle Geek Plus Arcade Edition, which will hopefully come out pretty soon. And also, we have some Kung Kwan Todd sketches that are coming out. And also... Oh, well, well I'm saying also a lot. <laughs> and yes, we will be at E3 next week, so yeah, we might not have a podcast. Uh, maybe if we... Want to record ourselves on the floor with all the people, it might happen, but it probably won't happen. I would say our best bet is that if we take equipment with us, um, that we would merely just pop into the room in between doing shit, going to parties and whatever, and be all like, hey, this is what we did today. It was fun. Screw any kind of sort of editing and just throw it up online. So, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And also, I'm proud to say that we are sponsored by Elgato Gaming. I just did a review of their HD60 Pro internal device, which is awesome. I've been using it for our Twitch and YouTube gaming streams, so you can definitely check them out on Twitter at Elgato Gaming, and you can look up Elgato Gaming on Amazon if you want to purchase the products. And also, make sure to catch us on Twitch and YouTube gaming. Um, the day after this podcast comes out, I shall be doing Mike Tyson's Punch Out on a CRT TV on both YouTube Gaming and Twitch. So make sure to check that out. Sounds like that'll be fun. Yep. Fun times ahead. Thank you very much, Ryan, for letting everyone know about our other shows. We will see you probably in a couple of weeks for another episode of Waxing Pixels. Everyone say bye. Heather? Bye. Bye, Ryan. Later. Bye.